the Tesla Semi will kill the diesel semi truck. It's no matter of if, it's a matter of just how fast can Tesla scale up and, and make these. Charging times are five to 10 times faster with their mega charging system. Economic efficiency of the Tesla Semi truck is saving on the order of $50,000 per year in fuel. Regenerative braking saves 80% of the energy, going to save $2,000 to $5,000 in brake pads. Also, this technology can go into the Cybertruck, which will then be twice as efficient for towing. So that means Tesla will win and have a decade long lead or more for semi trucks, which can be up to a 4 million vehicles at $250,000. And the semi truck market, light truck market, 14 million vehicles total per year at about $50,000 per vehicle. That's $700 billion. Uh, these two massive markets with the energy that needs to be added will more than double the total addressable market that Tesla will, and the potential of, of having the entire EV market, which they don't have. They have like 50% of the $40,000 and over vehicle market. But Tesla will you know, dominate the large vehicle from pickup truck on up. Anything that needs to move heavy loads, Tesla <coughs> has announced an utter an economic case for it. And getting your, your return on investment in three years. When you listen to the highlights from the Tesla day again, which I'm going to repeat, understand that they've solved all the efficiency issues, 30 to 40% more efficient with this battery usage, lower, lower costs, solving the brake pad issues. For, they've solved all the things that were the huge market, and they've solved it also for Cybertrucks. But all the big EVs is something that Lincoln subscribe like and subscribe to me, and then also follow in Patreon. I will have. We're using the uh, Cobno wraps leave. So essentially, we're using the the the, the Plaid uh, Model S Model X uh, powertrain, uh, and um, but it, we're, we're and, and, and actually enabling the two of the drive units to actually disconnect, uh, yeah. so that they're not uh, free spinning. Uh, so yeah. the efficiency is actually much greater in cruise. Yeah, this is really unique. I mean, we're going with a tri-motor system. One of them is constantly engaged, so that's for maximum efficiency. You're getting on the highway, that's doing the bulk of the work, and it's operating at the peak efficiency point of the entire drivetrain. And then the other two units are for torque and acceleration. So when the driver needs it to get their job done, whether that's you know, getting out of a loading dock or it's on the road they need to pass somebody, you're tackling a grade, you have the torque and power to do it. And the cool thing is that these are clutched automatically, so no driver input needed, but it's also seamless. So the highway efficiency unit is cruising along, doing its thing, and if the driver puts their foot to the floor, the torque unit spin up, clutch engages, and takes over, and it does all of that before we've maxed out the torque on the efficiency unit, so it's completely smooth. So that, that truck's clocking in at 82. That, that's weighing 82,000 pounds, and when you see that pass shot again, you'll notice, you'll notice that speedometer is climbing. You know, we're going 6% and accelerating up that grade. And the other beauty is that you've got all this power going up, but you also have it going down. And what that means is you've got regenerative braking. So rather than using a jake brake or engine braking like a diesel truck does, where you have to worry about hitting your shifts. If you miss a gear, you're onto your brakes and potentially in a runway situation. You don't have to worry about any of that. There's no shifting, no nothing. And so the regen recaptures all that energy as you're going down these grades. But on top of it, it also is a safer system for not just the driver, but everybody on the road because there's no gear to miss. Visibility low floor you can stand up in the cabin yeah and that's actually like a really big deal i mean and i mean you're a tall guy Elon. like yeah. you're able to stand up just fine and you know nice thing is is that if you're a truck driver and you're out during the day and it's you know it's cold it's snowy whatever you can get in and you, well, this isn't a sleeper cab this is a day cab you can still stand up and you can you know, shed your jacket put it on the wall all in the comfort you can put your coveralls on while in the cab so if you have to go do a dirty job you can do that comfortably as opposed to being out in the elements uh, obviously to charge a, a truck like this Quickly, you need a high power charger, so we developed a megawatt class charger as it's capable of charging at a megawatt to DC. Yeah. Um, and it's our next generation immersive cooling, so it's, it's liquid cooled, uh, so you don't need like a gigantic elephant trunk of a cable. You can actually have a small, small cable, and that cable delivers uh, a megawatt. So the future of transport obviously requires a sustainable energy infrastructure, so you've got to have all, all aspects of the the energy question answered, uh, sustainable power generation, 
uh, then you've got to store the power, and then you transfer the power to the vehicle. So the, like the three pillars of a sustainable energy future are sustainable power generation uh, with solar and wind. Uh, I'm actually a fan of nuclear, um, <laughs> which we should support. <laughs> um, and and uh, geothermal and many others, but things that are sustainable uh, long term, we, we uh, you want, you want, but, but things like wind and solar are intermittent, so you have to have the battery pack to store the energy so when the wind doesn't blow and the sun doesn't shine, and you can also buffer the power so you're not overloading the grid with spike loads. Yeah, and 